were kind of looking at a money pit, but a beautiful money pit. It had 50-year-old things that needed replacing. The roof was rotting. The front deck, well, it was about to fall off the side of the house when we got here. We wanted to preserve what was and put our spin on it. There was a lot of times where we were like, okay, like, sure, we'll see. Can you hear that? And that's why people come up here, to get away from it all. And you might be wondering, why am I on this lake in a canoe? And where's this canoe going? Well, it's going to a cabin. Not just any cabin. This cabin was thoughtfully designed and built with a purpose. And we're gonna find out what that purpose is as soon as I can get us to shore. Before we get ahead of ourselves, let's meet the owners of the cat. My name is Melissa Coleman. I am the creator of the blog, The Faux Martha. When I started my blog, I did what they tell you not to do in marketing class, and I named myself after Martha Stewart, the original, the person who kind of taught me from her show and her books. And faux was just something that felt really comfortable. I was trying to make things, trying to bake, and do it the best that I could without knowing a whole lot. So the phone mark that seemed really fitting. And it was also a, a URL that was available at the time. When I started blogging, it, it was just so self-serving. I was really young. I had just gotten married. We moved away from family. My husband was in grad school. I was working, but he was so busy, even on the weekends, I just needed an outlet. I didn't know what it would be, but anytime somebody notices your work, especially as a creator, it feels really good. And online was a great place to not only share my work, but to be noticed, to have my work serve a purpose for someone else. And all of that was really awesome and gratifying. It was a baking blog at first, and it went with me wherever we moved, and it changed with me as, as I changed. It's almost been this companion that I've had my entire adult life, capturing the things that I create. I like to make stuff. I am a designer by trade, but I'll take any medium. I'll take flour, I'll take wood, I'll take paint. I just like to make stuff. The Faux Martha has amassed quite the fan base since Melissa started writing in 2008. Her blog has 100,000 monthly page views and she has a large social media following. Online life is different than when I started in 2008. So I'm kind of a grandma in the industry. It got bigger and harder to manage and maintain and, and properly respond to everyone. I, I just physically couldn't do it in a, in a day's time. It's really hard to be really connected with people, and that's the thing that I love. As I went from, you know, literally using an iPhone to take pictures to a nice camera, things just got more polished, and it changes the way that you hear that and consume that. And even as I was sharing more and more of my life, I realized I needed to kind of pull back some privacy and keep intimate things intimate, like inside jokes with my family, like sitting on the couch with my family. And I, I still wanted to share the beautiful personal things, and I didn't know how to do both of those. <laughs> the answer we came to, it wasn't new or novel, but it was a cabin in the North Woods, what ended up being Grand Marais, Minnesota. 
we decided to kind of go down this path of searching for a cabin that took a whole year until we found the one and I would have bought it at home five hours away but my husband made us drive to go see it. Wait, 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 wait. This song is all wrong. Don't you have anything more relaxing? Ah, that's more like it. If only it looked this good when they first purchased the cabin. Oh, there she is. We know we were kind of looking at a money pit, but a beautiful money pit. Come on in. We've got bright green carpet that some have said look a little bit like astroturf. <laughs> Upstairs. And you go from green astroturf to orange. With this cool little open area, we could create a beautiful thing, something that we loved, that people could go and make their own memories. They, they didn't have to consume my feed. They could go make their own feed in a place that we love. So it's kind of perfect. Hey. Hello. Right, that's the grand, grand tour. You know, I had found myself like this for a lot of years and kept reminding myself to pick my head up and go outside and do that. And I wanted to share that with people too. And so as I have gone from here to sharing to Fresh Thing Publish, I'm getting my head up and trying to share something physical that people can touch, a place to sit and a place to enjoy. Oh, it's a slice of heaven up here, guys. Are you sending that to everybody? <laughs> well, I'm keeping this as a video so we can see when it's done of what it looked like before. All right, Hal, do you want to sign off? What does that mean? Just say bye to everybody? Bye. Bye. <laughs> Melissa and her family needed a place to disconnect from the busyness of the city and they found it in Grand Marais, a town on the coast of Lake Superior in the northern woods of Minnesota. Here you can truly connect with the outdoors. In fact, I'm gonna go for a hike right now. Ooh, this looks like a trail. Grand Marais and Cook County have always been a place for folks to get away. One of the gateways to the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness huge area. The county is, I think, the third biggest county in the state of Minnesota land-wise, but there's 5,500 people that are full-time residents in the county. With the way that work has changed, we're seeing folks that are in their 30s and 40s now saying, well, I'm not going back into the office. With internet, we can work from anywhere. If our eventual goal you know, was originally in our 50s or 60s, we were going to try and get up there, why not try and do that now? It's changing, and I think that, that can be a, a really positive thing for the community, especially if it becomes a more full-time residence versus just seasonal residence. The bones of the cabin were in perfect condition, but the exterior needed a lot of updates. We realized that the windows were beautiful, but they weren't sound. We knew we'd have to replace them. You could kind of see to the outside in some places. The roof was a 50-year-old roof. It was a beautiful cedar shake. 
roof, but it was rotting in some areas and letting water in. The deck was also rotting. It was really cool, but we wouldn't let our children stand but like a foot or two onto the deck. So we knew we would have to replace a lot of things, but you can see these really cool coves everywhere um, that will, these will be like reading nooks and then this will turn into a shelf. Another bathroom. It'll probably get worked on just a little bit. We're not handy people. We've got a lot of ideas, big ideas. I think we might add another window up there, but we can't execute our <laughs> ideas. Anton is an artist. We really like working with artists, and artists can be hard people to work with, and I know this because I am one. <laughs> That fellow artist is longtime Grand Marais resident and owner of Tiger Design Plus Build, Anton Moody. A lot of the buildings that exist up here start out as uh, simple retreats and are maybe just three season. They aren't expected to be used year round. This project, um, for one, was actually designed and used for its first uh, 40 years of existence as a summertime cabin. We had a meeting as far as like, what, what they wanted out of the place and how they saw themselves using the space. So I brought up points to them about, well, if you're gonna use this year round, like here's things that I'd look at doing and you could tell it was the bones were good. The roof was terrible. There was a lot of issues that needed to be addressed and cleaned up. You can design anything, but generally there's some sort of budget involved, right? So it's, when I design, I'm designing and building it in my head at the same time for like, well, if we do this, like, what does that mean? Like, we want to be able to go to a lumber yard, pick up what we need to do it, and come back up and do it. It took a little bit of time of back and forth, and I did a handful of different massing drawings based on our conversations of what we could do to the existing house, which would still honor the character of the shape because it's a pretty unique structure, but then also be able to make it more sustainable, more efficient, and maybe a little bit more 21st century. As we were thinking about replacing those things and you know updating them to code and some of the modern things, amenities that we would expect of a place today, we wanted to honor what was. So when we were picking the roof, we picked a different product that looked like uh, Cedar Shake. When we were updating the siding, we picked a product that was super sturdy, that would patina, that would silver out, that would age, but also not compromise the integrity. And every product we picked, we wanted it to last another 50 years. So we were kind of juggling form and function, beauty and longevity. And as we were making decisions, we were considering all of those things for the cabin. We wanted to make sure there was a high focus on the outdoors and we wanted to bring the outdoors in, which it was already doing a good job, but we just went a little bit bigger and we made bigger windows and we replaced windows. And there's even a window box that you can sit in. Like you can literally sit in a window and look outside and watch the animals traipse by, watch the snow fall, watch the leaves change. So that window seat that's sticking out there. You see that obviously if you're sitting there, you're looking right out at the lake, but if you, the triangle that used to be there was still there, you're just gonna be staring right at a triangle. But the view sheds out towards the lake then on the south side, we needed that solution. And so now when you're sitting in that window seat, your view is directly through that wing shape. And it's also kind of a neat little design element. Our hope for ourselves and for whoever stays there is to kind of be reminded of the outside, the great outdoors, to fall in love again with the simple things like the trees and the snow. And the windows are a really good reminder to ourselves to look up, to get off of our phone, to look up and, and to look out.
We made sure that we wanted to keep all the cedar. That was a rule we started out with. Don't remove the cedar, don't paint the cedar. Yeah, most of the cabin is clad with cedar on the inside, and so the, the cedar that you see on the inside of the house that's on the bottom side of the A-frame actually is two by dimension, so inch and a half thick, tongue and groove. So that is creating also the roof deck for the old roof before we added the, the added insulation up top. So if there was something that was bad, it's not simple to fix that because it's structural to holding the cabin together. So we made decisions and envelope design on like things that we knew we'd have to change. So there's the, the dormers that kind of split the middle of the cabin in half. We knew that adding a seven by seven window off the dining room was gonna create structural changes in the existing wall to make that happen. The window seat that is directly above that seven by seven window in the dining room, none of that was gonna work with how this was built in the first place. Okay, well now we totally disrupted this plane on the interior of the house. Well, that gives us an opportunity. We used all new cedar on that plane of the house. So instead of like only going part way to try and match old and new, we said, okay, if this wall is getting disturbed, then we're gonna peel off all the existing wood that's in there and keep it. And we're gonna stash it in the basement. And then we're gonna just on that plane, we're gonna use all new cedar. And so we'd kind of pick our way through the areas that we knew we had to disturb. And then where there was maybe a, a wall plane on the interior where we didn't want to take the whole thing out, but we knew we were going to have to get in there to rewire or to add plumbing lines or to do something. We took those sections of wall that we basically eliminated and were planning on redoing and used that old wood from 40 years ago to put back in place so that you didn't have the tonal changes when you have two boards from 40 years apart right next to each other, which is really hard to match. It was a little bit more painstaking making sure we could carefully, because cedar is delicate anyways, and then 40-year-old cedar is even more delicate. And in the end, we ended up using almost everything that we were able to salvage out to, to create that continuity in keeping old together and then adding in new where we needed to. Melissa wanted to maintain the character of the home while still bringing in modern amenities. And that can sometimes pose a challenge. My style is a little bit different. I love to merge old and new. I love to honor what is and then put my spin on it. There's, there's just a way to merge everything, I think, and it's merging pieces of our personality, pieces of who we are, and I've tried to keep a minimal aesthetic while layering in these rich old things to keep things from feeling sterile and cold. I want it to feel like a warm hug without overwhelming you, and I, I think the cabin is that. Now I can see why they decided to call it the Mine Stugga. The Minnestuga. The Munastuggy. The Minnestuga. The Mini Whatty. The Minnestuga. Ah, the Minnestuga. My Midwestern accent is a bit rusty, don't you know? We wanted to pick a name for this cabin that both honored where it was and the people that have influenced where it was and where it exists. Minna is pulled from Minnesota, Minneapolis, which when translated means by the water. And stuga is the Swedish word for cottage or cabin. And we wanted to honor the heritage. There's a lot of Nordic influence here of people that have come here, have lived their lives here. You see it in the culture, you see it in the design. And we wanted to honor that. 
My husband, he was terrified of taking on this project and seeing my vision through because my design style, it isn't one thing or, or another. And he, even when we worked on the house, he was like, how are we gonna merge all these things together? Because he wanted linear things that you could grasp and that you could see on Pinterest. And you know, somehow there's a way to merge all the things, the old and the new, is a really good example of that. You, you walk in and you see the 50-year-old cedar and you get to smell 50-year-old cedar and yet there's brand new couches in there that still have a nod to traditional design, I guess design that we'd almost call modern. Hey, well, Ben is not here. Where, where is he? Is he still out on that hike? Austin, you told him those berries weren't edible, right? To whoever may find this footage, this is Ben Roberts and the host, critically acclaimed award-winning show Design vs. Bill, somehow lost in the woods. Been walking for almost three hours. I don't know where I went. I thought I was on a trail. Turns out it was a thicket. I'm making this video for my family, let them know. I died doing what I love, not hiking, I hate this part, but doing what I love, which is looking at architecture from two different perspectives. I hope that I find my way out of here and we can see each other again in this life. <coughs> Starting any big project is, is a big undertaking. It's an incredibly vulnerable. You know there's gonna be some highs and lows and, and this project delivered all of those things. When we first started talking about the house and the remodel at the Minnestuga, I think I'd said, well, I think we have an opening and I think our goal was to be free and clear of the site by springtime so that they could have the cabin for this past summer. And then, of course, uh, there was a global pandemic, which you may have heard of. When we bought the cabin, we drove up and back in a day to put an offer on it. And four days later, we found out we were pregnant. And nine months later, when our baby was born, COVID hit. When we went into the hospital, we went in without a mask, and we came out of the hospital with a mask, and everything changed. And I was teaching my daughter online school my husband was working from home. Our life kind of turned upside down as, as everyone's life did. It's still, like we're still feeling the effects of it, not just in pricing, but in availability. And there was a little bit of frustration from them to me at first because they're like, oh, I thought we were supposed to be starting. And it's like, you can't get everything, right? You can't get the appliances for your house before you started building the house, you know? But when that kind of gets dropped on you in the middle of or towards the end of a project or right when you're supposed to be starting up, if you need something and it's not going to be there for five months, what do you do? The idea of deadlines is, is really tough. It's really tough up on the North Shore period because we, you know, somebody could send something FedEx freight and most places in the country that are within a relative distance from a city like there's FedEx freight trucks driving around every day we get that one day a week so if that transfer misses by one hour that means that stuff is sitting for a whole nother week before we get it the the, the pandemic and the supply chain issues have just like it, it's made it so so much harder for us This cabin, this project that was four and a half hours away, I had to give up so much control. And it's not something that I do well. It's, you know, it's, it is my job to be in control of things and to make sure something is beautiful. And I would say that's probably been one of the hardest parts of this project. It's hard too when you're an artist and you're working with two artists because he sees one thing and I see another thing. 
Melissa's got a much different design aesthetic than I do, uh, especially on the interior. And I think there was a lot of times where we're like, okay, like, sure, like, we'll see. And, you know, as we started putting all these final pieces together, everybody, all the guys on the project, myself included, were like, huh, that actually really worked. Like, that is awesome. Like, that turned out great. Every house has to be, I think, it should be designed for where exactly it's going. And I think the combination of my ideas and Melissa's ideas through this have really kind of just made this property that much more beautiful. I really feel proud of this project. And one of my favorite things as someone who designs something for other people to use is to get that feedback. To hear from people that have stayed there, to get a text message, to get a handwritten note that, that they had the best time with their family or they had the best time with their friends and they used it as we intended or as we created it to be used is the best feeling in the whole wide world. When I look at what we set out to do, what we set out to create, we set out to create a beautiful, quiet space that brought the outdoors in. I, I think we did that. See the sun rise in the west, sets in the east. It must be to the south. Press onward, I was staying at the Minnesota. It's a quaint little cabin. Let them know I won't be returning on the flight. Very thirsty. Just wanna go home. Dudes, there he is. He's just, just out there wandering, like we thought. I don't see any berries in his mouth, though, so that's good. Hey, Ben! Come on, man. We got a show to film. What? <laughs>